if you're ever asked for the domain of a function and you're not sure what the function looks like, then there's a surefire way to always figure out what the domain is. It involves finding the zeros and all x values where the function is undefined. So in this case, the zeros are when the numerator equals zero. So two minus x equals zero when x equals two. So that is a important point that we have to look at. Also, when x plus four equals zero, that means x equals negative four is an important point. So I'll draw a number line. So on a number line, I've plotted these points, negative 4 and 2. And so I'm going to look at everything to the right of 2, everything between negative 4 and 2, and everything to the left of negative 4. Because those are the only times when there are zeros or asymptotes or things that could change the domain. So when x equals negative 4, I get some number divided by 0, and that's undefined. So that right away means negative 4 is not in my domain, because I can't divide by a negative number. Then I'll look at something left of negative 4, like negative 5. So we'll have the square root of 2 minus negative 5, and we'll have x, which is negative 5, plus 4. Well, that just means we get the square root of 7 over negative 1. I'm not sure what that is, but that is a number. So that means this is in the domain. And everything to the left of negative 4 is in the domain. So I would say my domain consists so far of negative infinity up to negative 4, but I don't include negative 4, so I'll put a parenthesis. Now I'll pick any number between negative 4 and 2. I'm going to pick 0 because it's a nice easy number. So for 0 I have the square root of 2 minus 0 over 0 plus 4. Well that's equal to the square root of 2 over 4, and that's a number. And so that's also in the domain. So I'll say union negative 4 up to 2. And I'm not going to put a parenthesis yet because I don't know what happens right at 2. So I'll do 2. And I'll say the square root of 2 minus 2 over 2 plus 4. Well, that's equal to 0 over 6, which is equal to 0. So 2 makes it. So I'll put a bracket. And then I'll pick anything more than 2. Let's say 3. Square root of 2 minus 3 all over 3 plus 4. Well, that gives me the square root of negative 1 over 7. And that's no good. I can't take the square root of a negative number. So that means everything in this blue area is no good. And so that means nothing past 2 is in my domain, and this is the domain. Try this same method to figure out what the domain is for this function. Pause the video, try it, and then restart it, and you can see what the answers were. So far, you should have located important values of 3 and negative 1. So we're looking at the green area, the yellow area, and the blue area, because those are areas left of negative 1 between negative 1 and 3 and greater than 3. Now I'll test values that are in each window. I picked 0, and I tested this value and got negative 3 over the square root of 1. Well, that's a good number, so that means this is all good in there except, of course, 
right at negative 1. Because when I put negative 1 here, then I get the square root of 0, and I can't divide by 0. So I'm going to put an open circle right at negative 1. Now I'm going to test a number here, maybe negative 2. When I do, I get negative 2 minus 3 over the square root of negative 2 plus 1. Well, that's negative 5 over the square root of negative 1, and I can't take the square root of a negative number. So that means all of this is no good and not in my domain. The last number I'll test is 4. Well, now I have 4 minus 3. That's a good number. All over the square root of 4 plus 1. That's fine. I have 1 over the square root of 5. No issues there. So this is all good. So that means my domain is from negative 1 all the way up to infinity because all of this part of the number line was good except for right at number one. So I really should have made it like this.